identification, uh, we use an approach based uh, on uh, uh, transductive learning, so se semi-supervised learning, uh, to, uh, with a spectral graph uh, to look at the correspondence between one of the other. And uh, also, you can use re-identification in forensics uh, as a search. And the search uh, in large repository like this. As I told you before, I have just only one slide about, uh, about this problem. This is an interface we, um, we use uh, uh, in Modena, not only for people detection, also for artistic database, but uh, it's very simple. As, uh, and we can, uh, uh, we have a touch screen, and so we can uh, uh, rearrange, uh, use relevance feedback or human in order to see, okay, I like uh, this uh, people, I would like to see all the other aspects that are similar to this, Please give me the other one that uh, 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 maybe uh, I have some uh, uh, some video about uh, about uh, this interface uh, if you are interested. About that. But just uh, as a final uh, uh, topic, instead I would like to concentrate on the first problem. The first problem is about uh, reidentification as recognition, and uh, while in uh, uh, detection and also in tracking and in search, uh, learning is very important. I believe that in uh, recognition, the idea of model, the a priori model we have about people is still very important. And uh, it's stupid not to use uh, the knowledge we have uh, if we can use it. And so for this reason, I think, uh, not only I, but uh, uh, we think that uh, using uh, um, 2D and 3D model for doing re-identification could be very useful. Uh, this is just only an histogram uh, uh, that uh, show you how many papers have been published in the last uh, 10 years about people re-identification. So this is uh, the, the new fashion uh, uh, topic because in the just only last year uh, we, um, we look at about uh, 15 important uh, papers about uh, re-identification, so it's a problem uh, that is uh, in this moment uh, very, uh, um, very interesting. And also in this case, there are so many different applications that we try to do uh, a small survey about this. So what you can see, first of all, there are many solutions space. First of all, there are different approaches that uh, uh, address the problem with a single camera. So you come in this room and then you come back in this room or with the joint camera. With the joint cameras, you have a big problem about car camera calibration in color, for instance, uh, that are very different in indoor or outdoor, like this, something like this, or overlapped cameras where you can use uh, uh, geometric information. We have uh, uh, different approaches. They're using single shot of multiple shot. That means just only one image of the people of uh, a sequence of images of the people if you are tracking. And uh, uh, approaches that use body model, 2D model, and 3D body model, and especially many different proposals uh, referring uh, which kind of signature you are using, color, texture, position, soft biometric, like, for instance, the type of dress you have. In general, most of the work are using color. Uh, because, uh, look, uh, re-identification means uh, not biometrics, just all you to see if uh, uh, I can recognize him because he's a, uh, as a dress uh, all gray or another one that uh, is in red or in other situation. But uh, of course, color often is not enough. So a lot of uh, texture-based uh, uh, detector using SIFT, uh, SURF, and, uh, uh, and many other uh, detectors uh, are uh, very useful. One of uh, the best worker uh, uh, in uh, uh, re-identification uh, in the last uh, two years, uh, I think uh, is uh, this work uh, that come uh, from uh, uh, my good friend Vittorio Murino and the other one uh, of uh, University of uh, Verona and in Genova. This was uh, the first version that was being published uh, in ICPR uh, two years ago and, uh, uh, and use a symmetry model and 2D models about people. This model has been uh, refined and so now there is a, a, a new, uh, there was a, a new uh, proposal the, of the same year uh, that uh, have been presented on CDPR. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what uh, most of uh, the approaches do using the 2D idea of the model. 
the 2D idea of the body model is very simple, come from Leonardo da Vinci, the uh, famous uh, division of uh, the of the people body in three parts. Uh, actually, Leonardo in uh, the Vina Proporzione said that the head is just only one eighth of uh, the body, but uh, in re-identification we normally use 20% because uh, so you can use also the hair or other pa parts. And also this is the division typical of uh, occidental dress uh, that is as well, that you cannot use uh, in other, uh, other applications. But the new approaches instead uh, of using fixed parts to try to learn uh, which are the best uh, um, segmentation of the body in order to do a local matching. Uh, why? Because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important not to confuse uh, people with uh, uh, jeans uh, and the white uh, uh, t-shirt with someone with a uh, uh, blue t-shirt and one, uh, white uh, trousers. So uh, this is a typical uh, ap uh, application in 2D, but uh, in the last period also 3D models are becoming very interesting. One of the first uh, attempt of using uh, 3D models have been presented uh, six years ago by uh, Mohan Trivedi and other one uh, uh, using a very simplified uh, 3D models. They start to only say, okay, if you have a people and uh, you can see the people in different positions, you can open uh, this uh, situation in a cylindric manner and you have this kind of signature, 3D signature, mm -hmm. uh, very approximated 3D signature to compare, but is working very well in, uh, in constraint system. And this is something that we would like to present that we are doing uh, in our lab. This is a not concluded uh, work because it's a part of the work of one of my PhD students. And the idea is to create a very simplified um, model of, uh, uh, of human body in order to improve uh, the, um, the identification. So these are the constraints. First of all, uh, uh, we need tracking. So we need tracking and possible calibration or auto calibration in order to have the idea of the head of the people, and then uh, uh, we use a local color histogram in each point. What do we do? Uh, first, uh, we create uh, a very simplified people model, taking uh, uh, some, uh, uh, a lot of uh, images like that uh, in order to, to have uh, the idea of uh, how the people uh, normally, the pose of people going around, look, it's not uh, perfectly, uh, vertical, uh, so we, we created uh, this kind uh, of model uh, by example, and, uh, uh, and so we created this very sarcophagus-like uh, uh, model with uh, very few points. Uh, we use just only 600 points, uh, that is, uh, I know for uh, some of you that are working in computer graphics, uh, is something very trivial, but if you want to work uh, in real time, uh, 60 points are just enough. Uh, six, uh, sorry, 600 of points are just enough. For uh, every model, we have uh, um, uh, two information. The first information is the height of the people, and the, the second information is for each vertex uh, of, uh, of the object. You have some uh, descriptors, the uh, average color, the histogram of color in this area in order to take into account uh, not only this point uh, but also the point around. And other two um, interesting uh, value, theta, theta i is uh, the optical radiability. What does it mean? Is that, uh, as I show you in the next uh, slide, when you created this model, you can say, okay, this point is sure, is uh, something that I'm seeing, or maybe I'm not so sure. So this uh, point takes into account of the reliability of the measure you have. And the second one is the saliency of the vertex. What does it mean, saliency? If I take a database of these images and I look, uh, for instance, at every one of us, maybe this area is interesting because uh, there are some of you that has uh, written uh, sibgraphy and the other one. No? So this is a very salient with respect to maybe this area that is black for everyone. And so for this reason, we use also this uh, number. And uh, so at the beginning, uh, when I start to, to detect the shape, uh, I start to initialize this model. Uh, using the 3D model is aligned uh, with uh, the 2 d shape. And uh, we do a projection of the Im 2D image to the 3D model. And for this reason, I need the orientation. 
because I, I must do, to learn where. If I have tracking, I have trajectory information I, I can do, but if I have not uh, tracking because the people is still, uh, I need to have an information about the orientation. And then uh, uh, having this appearance model, I can create this kind of sarcophagus. If I have just only one image, I, I can do the hypothesis of symmetry, and I put uh, uh, these images in all the, the position of the body, but with the different uh, reliability of the point. Instead, if I have more uh, information, I can do in a 3D. Uh, not only for one uh, people, but we proposed this uh, in Barcelona ICCD last year, also for uh, uh, more people. Many of you will recognize the PETS data set here, the one that most of you uh, of we use. And then, after that, what we do? We do a comparison and re-identification, not only uh, 2D with the 2D, but 3D with the 3D. And so in this manner, we can uh, not have just only a global information, but a very local information. They say, okay, I'm different to him uh, because I am not a beer. <laughs> he may have some, uh, some point here, or, or maybe mm, we are similar because uh, all of us uh, have the glasses and so on. And we use uh, two different, um, we use uh, a distance uh, between histograms. The distance between histograms uh, is weighted uh, with the weight that take into account uh, both the saliency and the reliability. And uh, uh, so at the end, uh, we have an, a, a situation like this one uh, that I can show with uh, a small video. Okay, this is uh, the model generation that I presented you before. We, we, uh, we selected a subset of, uh, of examples, sorry, in Italian. So we created the model. Uh, we uh, subsample the vertex. So there are some preliminary tests. So you do the initialization of the model. Put in that one. Look, this is the um, uh, 2D to 3D mapping uh, of uh, the image uh, in, uh, in this very simplified method. Um, okay, you can add uh, uh, additional views of this to create a model. Uh, offline for data set, uh, online for uh, the training set or during real time uh, we are doing. And whenever you have a new one, uh, you try to find which is uh, the most similar with respect uh, to this information. Okay, I can, uh, I can skip some part uh, of this and say, uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, okay, when uh, a people is starting, uh, this is an example of uh, David, the PhD student, that is uh, going around uh, in, uh, in, in my campus. And this is the idea of sarcophagus that is a method uh, on, the, uh, on the image. And uh, we do also tracking, so we have uh, the hypothesis of the orientation. This is, uh, by the way, the, my university, so you can show the, you can. Uh, we can see our campus uh, with uh, 3D reconstruction uh, uh, of, uh, of the campus that have been done in order. Uh, in a surveillance, you can have this information because uh, the camera can be calibrated or auto-calibrated. And so in order to have the 3D information, okay. if something. And so uh, what you can say here is uh, the one camera uh, detection and the other one is the 3D reconstruction uh, that uh, is done in real time uh, during uh, the, um, the information we have. And so at the end, uh, okay, at the end we do the re-identification. Re identification as I told you, we can do also in uh, uh, other type of videos with many people and uh, with, uh, uh, if you have the information of the camera. Uh, just to finish, uh, some, uh, okay, close this. Uh, some results uh, about this. There are preliminary, but not so preliminary, because uh, uh, is, uh, we, we spent two years in this work, so now uh, David uh, and the other did uh, a lot of experimentation. There are so many data sets you can use, but a few of them uh, have a different view of the same people. So if you would like to have something that is real, you, you, can, uh, you must have this. And so uh, uh, among the other, I would like to, to, to show you 
uh, our uh, data set that is online that contain uh, uh, 600 of video of uh, 200 of different people that uh, we manually segmented. So it was a big uh, work that we did uh, in a European project and now is uh, available. That is uh, called the 3 Pass. Uh, there is www.openvisor.org uh, um, uh, website where you can find uh, a lot of video, not only that one, uh, but also other data sets, uh, for instance, data sets for shadow analysis, uh, data sets uh, for tracking. Uh, so please visit uh, this uh, uh, website if you want. And so this is uh, uh, some result. Simple result, uh, just only 50 people. But 50 people, 50 typical Italian students that are all equal. Look, these are three different people, but uh, with the uh, <laughs> same address. Uh, but you can recognize each other because uh, you have a different position of, uh, of the t-shirt, of the skirt, and the trousers. So you have the possibility to recognize the difference because you look at local position and not a global position. Instead, these are some uh, new uh, uh, measures comparing 2D and the 3D uh, uh, models. Uh, the blue one is this uh, 3D, of course, uh, that I, I, since I'm presenting you, is, uh, the, of course, the best. And, uh, um, but uh, the other one, are uh, the first one is using just only a single shot, so just only a single image. Or the second one, the green, uh, is using multiple shots. That it means uh, it, don't do, uh, it doesn't do uh, 3D reconstruction, but use a lot of view of the same people. So in such a manner, it's not different. Uh, we, we are a little better because we use uh, local feature instead of uh, global feature. But, uh, now we are using uh, this uh, approach not only for uh, academic purposes, but also for uh, real application, and especially for doing uh, search by similarity with uh, some cameras that are installed. Actually, we, we have a project with uh, the municipality of Modena that uh, started just only after two years because of problem of privacy that uh, maybe I'm sure you, you uh, are common also here in Brazil. Uh, but uh, we put some cameras uh, around the stadium, the football stadium in Modena, to try to recognize the aspect of the people when I arrived before going in the stadium and when are inside the stadium, maybe with the same dress, but uh, different things uh, in, uh, in the head or uh, different part of this. And, uh, and so the, we have the problem with the different cameras because unfortunately the color calibration, as I told you, is a, 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 a big problem. So concluding, concluding, uh, it's not a conclusion. It's just only to say that uh, we have a lot of things to do. For pedestrian detection, we have some fixed point, but pedestrian detection is not enough huh? because I would like to recognize you, but you are sitting in, uh, on the chair, so pedestrian detection doesn't work in, the, uh, in this uh, uh, reason. And there is a lot of work uh, for occluded uh, path. For instance, uh, in, the, uh, in the survey of uh, Pietro Perona in, uh, uh, in Pami, there is a lot of measure for occluded people too and also the possibility to reconstruct the 3D information just only for one image. And for people identification, re-identification and search, uh, here there is a, a, a sea of things to do, especially for 2D and 3D visual information to create effective services and effective application and also to use, uh, to work with uh, uh, small data. Okay, as is concluding, this is uh, are the name of people working uh, in my lab with me, and uh, I would like to thank them for uh, all the work uh, that we did together. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Questions? I'd like to say that I enjoyed so much your presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, after some experience with pedestrian detection, I could realize that um, the features that you use in the framework of classification is more important than the classify. Yeah. And uh, you could see that uh, um, there's not so 
many room to improve the classifiers until now. Uh, do you agree with this um, this idea? I ca I cannot uh, see what ca I can do to improve the classifier so yeah. much, but the the features you have too much, and then you can yeah. fuse feature information and, yeah. and so yeah, forth. I, I agree with you. I think that uh, I don't want to, 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 to be here to say everything about classifier, but you know that neural network uh, of uh, one uh, group of, uh, uh, of people working with are a linear classifier in such a manner and are very good. But in the last period, uh, I think that uh, most of the results uh, have been provided by super vector machine and cascade of super vector machine or cascade of classifier. The idea of using weak classifier, I think, uh, add a boost and logic boost are very uh, interesting and uh, so spread that I think that is uh, a, a good uh, conclusion. Instead, about the feature, it uh, depends. For instance, uh, uh, if you look for pedestrian, uh, our shape is uh, easy to be recognized by border. So uh, uh, histogram of gradient or something like this are good. But you start, uh, if you start to look for people sitting or for other parts, uh, I see that other features could be more interesting too, like uh, uh, based Coverance or, descriptors um, are very yeah, good. Yeah, uh, texture descriptor. For instance, there is uh, one interesting work that has been presented this year in CVPR by the group in Berkeley of uh, Gendra Malik, and last year also about poselet. Uh, poselet are a small part of the body that can be used to recognize uh, the pose of the people, like that one, or maybe like that one, and so on. And so you can use the pose letter as descriptor also. So I think in, there is uh, a lot of things. But uh, to conclude, uh, you know, one thing is, uh, are the real, uh, the real application, and one thing are the academic uh, uh, competition. And so since uh, most of the working people uh, in pedestrian description use the same data set, uh, Pascal and you know many other, the one of Perona that have been presented in CBPR two years, three years ago, and so on. In this kind of data set, every result is around 92, 93%. So I don't think there is a room to, to improve more. But I think instead that in real application, there is a lot of work to do. If I'm not wrong, I think Perona was yeah. the one that created the two, 25,000 yeah. data set, yeah, frames true. data set, and it yeah. was very interesting for Benjamin because I think he proved that, the, for example, Hog SVM uh, had 60% uh, only in this, in this yeah. framework, <laughs> in this data set. <laughs> okay, uh, now uh, I, I think that uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, there are so many collaborations between group. For instance, the group of Pietro Perona that is in Caltech is working with the other group of, uh, of Professor Schill and the other one, so they created the one data set, uh, also in comparison with the OG and the other one. But I like uh, that work because uh, uh, if we don't have a public benchmark, we cannot measure each other, so I think it's very important to have it. Now I think we, we have to, to, to go in the next step uh, and to have some commercial data set and not only academic, like in ferret uh, in, uh, in uh, face recognition. Because you know that now there are so many uh, industrial uh, products that start to use pedestrian protection. For instance, uh, in the car, uh, the Mercedes car, the B, uh, uh, the BMW cars use pedestrian detection in the car, and so for this reason, but they use also the desk information, they start to have data set. Uh, uh, the one of Gabriela, for instance, uh, uh, Gabriela that uh, is uh, from University of uh, Amsterdam, but also for Daniel Kreisler, has uh, this kind of data set. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I was wondering, uh, for the pedestrian tracking, like in the soccer example you mm -hmm. just showed, do you have any specific treatment for confusion situations like goals or collaboration? Uh, okay, no. There are two things. Uh, the first one uh, for goal, for uh, maybe I have some video, um, mm, we worked a lot with the group uh, of University of Florence uh, three or four years ago. Uh, to do different compression in video of uh, soccer video. 
And for instance, in this case, uh, we, you can use the information of the optical for, flow uh, field of the camera maker, that for instance, when you have a, a goalkeeper or when you have some specific situation, you have a zoom in that area or not. And so we use uh, this kind of trick. So we use not only the static cameras, but also the moving camera from broadcast in order to understand if there is something interesting or not. So in specific, uh, the University of Florence created the classifier to, create the, to understand the important event. We have a paper together in transaction of multimedia objects. This is one thing. But instead, uh, as we discussed today, together yesterday, I think that there are so many situations in which you have nothing to do. Just for instance, when you have two people with the same dress, because yeah, I don't know why, but in, uh, in soccer, everyone uh, uses uh, 11 and 11. I, I learned uh, by my son that have the same, uh, uh, the same dress, but not the goalkeeper. And so when you have two people that stay together, what you can do. Tracking doesn't work. Uh, maybe people detector working enough. In this case, uh, now mm, the, the people of my company just only look uh, about how many people are in that group. It's okay, uh, two people, three people, wait a, a little and then come back because uh, the, um, the goal uh, is not to track everything, uh, but just only to have any information uh, during the um, during uh, the coaching time, uh, during uh, the training phase. As I told with him yesterday, uh, we had also in this case the GPS information because we asked some soccer player to put the GPS so in order to have the ground show. There is another question there. Thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, first, I have a uh, more technical question, then I have a comment. Uh, so in the optimization, you do the redu reduction of search space uh, where you have particles. Yeah. So do you still need to run in multiple scales to find the pedestrian, or you can just run in one scale and, and you get them? <laughs> if you are lucky, it is not enough one, uh, one Okay, so you no, still I'm need joking. to... Uh, using just only one layer, is uh, uh, we, we give a uniform uh, uh, position is like using a sliding window with the less number of slides. But uh, instead we did a lot of experiment uh, and we see that uh, you have the possibility to converge in very few layers, so three, four, not more than five because uh, at the end uh, if you use more than five you, you have a convergence in, uh, in the wrong position, it's just enough. Because you have to, to understand uh, uh, there is a, a trade-off between the basin of attraction you have uh, uh, of the, the detector. For instance, in space, uh, is uh, depending on the resolution of face. Uh, also with viola jones, uh, it's working very well uh, because you know that our face are symmetric and so on, uh, but depending on uh, the dimension of the face, of course. So you need a number of uh, layers depending on so, the size of you are looking for. Thank you. And uh, it's more a I would like to ask, you, you mentioned commercial data sets for like, as they have for face recognition, yeah. ferret, FRGC, for pedestrian. But uh, what, how, how you think the, because everybody's trying to do surveillance, but yeah. they, they do in a small scale. So how, how do you see the future, like when you have a data set with uh, 400 cameras acquiring data, like PTZ cameras. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think people are going to the, in the, into the right direction, uh, uh, in the right way of optimizing the algorithms to, to be able to, mm -hmm. to handle these such big data sets. But I think that now it's a time that also surveillance uh, as face recognition uh, is uh, in a stable position to become a commercial uh, uh, product for some specific part. And so for this reason, I see that uh, the big commercial groups, uh, I see IBM, uh, uh, the, uh, Microsoft also, uh, and uh, um, Siemens also, would like to have uh, this common uh, data set. And I think that in the next future, maybe that would be available. The problem is about privacy. The problem about privacy, so for instance, the only one uh, 
real data set that uh, has been uh, in, uh, uh, in distribution uh, still uh, two years ago was the one of eyelids uh, that, uh, uh, you know, eyelids uh, uh, that uh, have been provided by Scotland Yard uh, in, man in uh, some uh, uh, tube uh, in London uh, and in the UK. But uh, there are so many complaints about privacy that so people d d normally don't do. I think that in the future, I'm sure that that will be some um, uh, group of companies that will put together to have this kind of comparison. But this is the role of university also. The role of university, I think, uh, to, to have a possibility to collaborate together and to say, okay, we would like to do, to do some real benchmark that are not only for, uh, for uh, supporting uh, our solution uh, in contrast to the other one, but also to, to, uh, to validate uh, the commercial system. So. Thank you. Anyone? So I have a question for you. Uh, as I s understand, uh, understood, you, you get some improvements by using uh, the 3D shape. Yeah. Do you think it's a good idea to, uh, I'm not sure if you are updating your 3D model, mm -hmm. but just the, the uh, texture. Do you think it's a good idea to uh, try to deform the 3D, then you can get more reliable? Yeah. Uh, shape of the for re-identification? The answer is absolutely yes. Okay. Uh, in, in this moment in my lab we are trying to use Kinect to create a three more uh, articulated 3D models and using more Kinect to, to have this uh, possibility to have uh, uh, this kind of things. Normally the problem is uh, also uh, the trade-off between the real-time constraints you have because uh, you know, whenever you have to up the, uh, update the model, also the articulation of the model is become uh, more difficult. And also maybe because sometimes it's not necessary. So it's not necessary to understand the position of the arm to recognize you with respect to him. But uh, I'm sure that having the possibility to modify, to improve this model, there is a lot of uh, possibility to use 3D model of people, I think. Okay, let's think again.